Number 13 then from the 2014 Advanced Tyre. What have we got here? Greatest and least efficiency, which is given by this. Because it's not maximum and minimum turning points or stationary values. And it talks about greatest and least, and there's an interval involved. And then you have to consider that there's some sort of graph or other. And that this graph, within some interval, and it says S is from 40 to 120. So I'll just say it's like that to begin with. What's the maximum and minimum values? Well, they should occur at the end points unless there's any stationary points, that is, turning points, in between. So the way that this should be answered would be to find the greatest and least efficiencies, uh, insert the two end points and get the values at each of those, and then search for any stationary values within the interval and test them as well. So the first thing I'll do then, I'll look for those stationary values. Now it says the fuel efficiency varies with its speed s. Now this is expressed in terms of x. So the fuel efficiency varies with s means I'm really looking for df by ds. Now f is expressed in terms of x and x is expressed in terms of s so you've got related rates of change there. So since f is only expressed in terms of x, so I can only differentiate it with respect to x, x turns according to s, so it multiplied by dx by ds. I'll need those two derivatives. And then this is what I want to find stationary values for, df by ds. Well, what's df by dx? Well, that will go, and I've got a product. So differentiating the first one is still e to the x. That will leave all of the second part. And then leaving the first one alone and differentiating the second part and then gives me e to the x times, and that will go to cos x plus sine x, and of course the constant will disappear. Now I can tidy that up by taking out the e to the x. And then gathering them together, I've got a sine x and a sine x, the cos x has disappeared and a minus root 2. So I've got 2 sine x minus root 2. Or df by dx. Now, what's dx by ds? Well, dx by ds, notice that's just a linear term there. That'll just be pi upon 80. If you like, you could multiply it out. Pi s, pi s over 80 minus pi 40 over 80, so it's pi over 80, which means that this thing that I want, and I've not left myself enough room for here, so df by ds will be pi upon 80 times that thing. Pi upon 80 e to the x times 2 sine x minus root 2. Now, what I'm searching for are stationary values. So, if I've got any stationary points, that means that df by ds would have to equal 0. So that means that pi upon 80 e to the x times 2 sine x minus root 2 would have to equal 0. Now there's a factorisation there, so either this factor could equal 0 or that factor could equal 0. Now you know that e to the x can never equal 0 because the graph of e to the x is asymptotic to the x-axis, so it never gets there. So that means then that this equals 0, in which case the sine of x would equal root 2 upon 2 root 2 upon 2, or if you like, 1 upon root 2, in that more recognisable form. In which case, x is going to equal, because you know that that's 45 pi upon 4, either pi upon 4 or 3 pi upon 4. But I'll need to know if they lie within this range, because you've only to consider s between 40, s is the speed, between 40 and 120. There's a formula for x here in terms of s, which of these lie in that interval in the first place? Well, I'll have to rearrange that part there then. If x is pi times s minus 40 over 80, which I didn't need to write again because I had it up there, then that means that I've got s minus 40 is 80x upon pi. So s will be 80x over, where am I, pi plus 40. So what have I got for those? 
if x is pi upon 4, that means that s equals 80 upon pi times pi upon 4 plus 40. That cancels down to 60. 60 is in there, so that means I'll consider pi upon 4. What about 3 pi upon 4? That means s would be 80 upon pi times 3 pi upon 4 plus 40. So that, that cancels out, that's 20, 60, that's 100. Now if I was to go another full wavelength on and add in another 2 pi, so that would become 9, well that would have been far too big. So those are the only two within this interval. So now I know the four things I need to test. I need to test it at 40, I need to test it at 60, I need to test it at 100, I need to test it at 120. I've got to consider S equals 40, S equals, I'm losing the place here, 60, S equals 100, and S equals 120. So here it is all up here. There are the four speeds I need to test it for. These two are the endpoints, and those two are the speeds that created turning points within it. Whether there were maximums or minimums doesn't actually matter. The proof of the pudding will be in the eating. What values do they produce? Well, they won't produce any values at all so far because f is defined in terms of x. So I want the x corresponding to each of these to put into that. Well, I know those two because I just had them before. That was x equals pi upon 4, and that was x equals 3 pi upon 4. So to find those ones, I'll have to put them into this formula. We can just do it on the spot. 40 minus 40 is 0, so that's x equals 0. And that one, 120 minus 40 is 80, so that's pi. Those are the four cases I need to test to get the maximum and minimum value of that in this interval. So x equals 0, what have we got? f will be 15 plus e to the 0 times the sine of 0 minus the cosine of 0 minus root 2. I'm not sure if I should actually do that a substitution. Maybe I could just have done it directly to save some space here. So that will be 15 plus 1 times 0 minus 1 minus root 2. So that's 15 minus 1 minus root 2. So that's actually 14 minus root 2, whatever that is. x equals pi upon 4 means f will be 15 plus e to the pi upon 4 times, now I know the values for the sines and cosines of that, that will be 1 upon root 2 minus 1 upon root 2 minus root 2 they disappear, cancel out, disappear, so minus root 2 times it. That means that will be 15 minus root 2 times e to the pi up in 4. So getting messy to see so far. Let's pick out these answers. There's two candidates so far. Oh. x equals 3 pi up in 4. f will be 15 plus e to the 3 pi up in 4. Times. Now, 3 pi upon 4 just means you're in the second quadrant, where the sine will be positive and the cosine will be negative. So, I could just go straight in with the sine of that will be 1 upon root 2. The cosine will be negative, so it will be plus 1 upon root 2, minus root 2. So, I've got 1 upon root 2, plus 1 upon root 2, that's 2 upon root 2. And 2 upon root 2 is root 2. Take away root 2 is 0, so that's just 15. And finally, x equals pi means that f will equal 15 plus e to the pi times. Now, the sine of pi is 0. The cosine of pi is negative 1. So I'll make it plus 1 minus the root 2. So that's going to be 15 plus 1 minus root 2 e to the pi. Well, Choose your pick. Which is the biggest, which is the smallest? Well, that's 15. That's 15. Now, root 2 is 1.4 odd, so that's negative, so that's less than 15. That's obviously less than 15. That's obviously less than 15, so that's my greatest value. I can see that one. Now, e to the pi is a fairly substantial chunk, because that's e to the power 3, and so on. 
and it's been subtracted from the 15. That will be a lot more than subtracting the root 2 from the 14. So I would reckon it is this. We'd probably just have to use a calculator to verify this part of it. So I'm happy with this one. That's definitely the maximum. This one here. But which one is the minimum? It looks like this one. But I'll just type this lot in and see what it comes to. Now this one is 5.4 How far will I go? 41 Well that's obviously a lot bigger than that because that's just one off of it Although candidate would be this but it's more than likely that one And this one is 11.898 So I'll just call it 11.90 I can just for completeness I'll put that one in that one is 12.585, 12.59. So there's the minimum one. So there's the maximum, and there's the minimum. Now it's just a case of making the final statement then. And I'll need some space for that. So here's a wee bit of space. The solution would be it says, what's the greatest and least efficiency and what speeds do they occur at? Well, what I've done, I've put in the X's here, but I've got the speeds that correspond to them up there. So the maximum was 15, when X was 3 pi upon 4, so when the speed was 100. So I'll put down that. The maximum F is 15, and what were the units anyway? Kilometres per litre. Kilometres per litre at a speed of 100, and that was kilometres per hour. The minimum F is, now which will I put down of these values, or I'll put this one, or I'll put that, maybe I'll put the 5.41. That's more like the thing you might see in a car magazine. Kilometres per litre at Pi and pi corresponded to 120 at speed equal to 120 kilometres per hour. There we go. Those should be the solutions to that question. Quite a bit of number crunching there. Took a bit of time.